Hey, welcome to the official Windows 7 channel and this is another video in our series explaining the BIOS and we are using the BIOS in this Toshiba computer um, for example and uh, we'll go into the advanced settings of this BIOS and explain and uh, keep in mind some of the options here are basically uh, the same on most BIOS but some options might have a different name or just not be at all present on your BIOS or maybe you have options on your BIOS that is not available here and that's why we'll see probably four or five different BIOSes in a series of videos so that we can see all types of options available. So in the advanced settings here, we got legacy USB support as the first option. What does that mean? What should I do? Legacy USB support. Um, when you bought a computer many years ago, most computers came with all sorts of USB devices but a lot of devices were not in USB and an example of that keyboards and mouse the keyboards and the mouse 10 years ago uh, often were simply plugged into PS2 type connectors so they had their own little connector and with time everybody decided why do we put these connectors we should you know just do USB keyboards mouse and all sorts of devices and what that brings as a problem is the fact that some computers cannot boot up if they don't detect a keyboard or a mouse that is present on your computer. So when people change from PS2 type keyboards plugged in USB keyboards, the computer just didn't want to boot up. And that was a problem so they kind of solved it in the BIOS by putting what is called legacy USB support so it means that if you plug in a mouse or a keyboard and USB now your computer knows there's a com uh, there's a keyboard and a mouse for example it understands that these devices are available and will actually tell the computer oh don't look at the PS2 port or don't search for it we've got it in USB instead so uh, that's one part of the legacy USB support the other legacy USB support is also the fact that with time USB ports actually have changed we started out with USB 1 and 1.1 we went up to USB 2 and now we're at USB 3 that's available and we even have little talks about USB 4 eventually and USB 3 on new computers for example I have a new Toshiba computer that has USB 3 ports and the difference is uh, very easy to see USB 2 ports has if you if you look at the port on the side of your computer you'll notice that you've got a little plastic a rectangular plastic pin in the connector and um, that little plastic rectangle plastic in the connector has different colors it can be black it can be white and it can be blue on computers technically uh, there's a convention which is not always followed but on the USB 1.1 the USB ports should have had white connectors and it was repeated in the uh, USB 2.0 where you have white plastic uh, inside the connector of the USB ports and if your computer is very very recent something new like my Toshiba that I bought about uh, four months ago you might see that your USB ports actually have the little plastic rectangular plastic in the connector is actually blue and that means that the blue 
connectors usually refer to your USB as being USB 3.0. So take a look at that. If it's blue, USB 3. If it's white or, or black, USB 1.1 or USB 2. So le legacy USB support also talks about that. It means that if you have a USB 1.1 device, it will be compatible with your USB 2 or USB 3 ports. Legacy means, you know, everything that was hold that we still want to make it work today. So that's another reason why legacy USB support should usually be enabled all the time because of the uh, old material that we might want to plug in and like I said keyboards and also um, any old devices, old scanners, printers that are not enabled for USB 2 or 3 so usually you keep it enabled why do you want to disable it and why it's available there could be a case when an old legacy device creates problems on your USB ports or on your computer what you can do is actually turn off disable legacy support and see if when the old stuff doesn't work if your computer still has problems or not so you can uh, one you can check for problems because of that and you can disable legacy support if everything you have is brand new so that it doesn't interfere also so this is about legacy USB support in the BIOS it's uh, one of the features that is usually pretty much available on most BIOSes and um, one thing you might see uh, I've seen some BIOS have something called legacy uh, USB keyboard so it's pretty much um, the same type of um, connector or option in the BIOS uh, but it refers directly to the keyboard because most of the time legacy support is mostly for keyboards and mouse so that's the legacy USB support hey if you uh, enjoy having these uh, videos click the subscribe button at the top of the screen you'll be informed when new videos are online and if you have any comments, questions, let us know. And hope you come back to the official Windows 8 channel. And uh, hey, take a look at our other videos. It's a complete series on computer biases. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.